when it's four at a time is what you're compelled to do. Okay, but realize that while you're moving that mountain a spoon at a time, somebody's replacing that mountain on the other side. So you think you're moving it, but all I'm doing is building up the mountain, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So the exercise in futility is great for self-sacrifice for being the goat, mm. but it doesn't do anything to affect the inevitability. If it's inevitable, you it's whatever. So why not, my response would be, why not uh, 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 immerse yourself in the blackface culture, reap the benefits, knowing, hey, it's all going to come back to Africa anyway. It's all good, baby. What? If I asked you to get a piece of paper and something to write with and to make a numerical list of all the things that you would be willing to die for, how long is your list? The pack 48. Willing to die for. The pack 48. Willing to die for. How long is your list? What is the tribal stuff? The pack 48. The tribal stuff is what goes above the immediate acquaintances of the soul. Willing to die for. The family, the people you know, the next door. You will be willing to die for. The tribal stuff. The pack 48. I'm talking about hanging movies. How long is your list? So the connection with the ancestors is tied into the tribal self. What does that mean? That means that the tribal self constantly reminds us willing to die for that we don't have the right How long is your list? to claim independence. The tribal 48. Yes, sir. I'm creating new realities, states and style of states and shit. And it's at Florida, right. Texas. Hey, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a discussion. One of our law supporters and uh, uh, watchers of our channel, he sent in a specific question to us, and he asked us because we had been doing a section on community. If you've been watching the video, I mean on culture. If you've been watching the videos then you know where we're at. If you're not, then you need to go back and check out some of the other videos that we've done on culture and look at the discussions that we've been having. But the law supporter and viewer, he asked the question, he asked us to address this issue. Uh, the last video we did, we did one where we talked about, is there an active black culture in America? And the argument came out resoundingly, no, there is no original culture that's doing what culture is meant to do for a people for black people in america the idea came out and if you disagree with any of that go check the video out and listen to the argument but the last idea that came out of that was simply that what we're calling black culture is nothing more than cultural black face it's black people imitating the culture and morals of another people in the in the specific way that black people express everything that black people do. So the brother asked if that's true, if that is true, because the brother himself said he believed that we do have a culture, but he said, do we have a responsibility to the community and to the culture? And he asked us to address that issue. So we decided to do a show dealing with that issue specifically. So to start off, that's the question that we're asking. Do black people, those who are older, those who are aware, those who are supposed to know certain specific things have a responsibility to the people that are still in our communities. I'm going to read something. This passage that I'm, for the, uh, that I'm about to read comes from a manhood training class that was developed in the, in the prisons in Texas for the young brothers to learn and develop a, a, a more righteous level of conduct for expressing themselves as Black men. The uh, class was called the Who Root You Late. What I, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to jump into at, to tackling that question and dealing with the issue that our law supporter raised for us. We're going to start with Brother War when I get to reading this. So, Brother War, get yourself together, get your uh, get your conversation and dialogue together. Y'all know usually we start with Brother E, and then me and Brother E are usually go at it, and then Brother War come in and play the middleman, but I want to start with Brother War today. So let me read this passage. It's called A Revolutionary. But it says, uh, and I'm, and it starts with a quote from Asada Shakur. It says that uh, no, no, I gotta go back. Hold on. Okay, it's called it's, it's uh, called revolution, and it says revolution is change. Re means again or back. Evolution means a process of change in a certain direction. Webster's second definition is 
a process of gradual and relatively peaceful social, political, and economic advance. Evolution implies the natural growth and unfoldment of all organisms. For this conversation, we are dealing specifically with the human community. When we inherit the community, our responsibility is to make the community greater than when we first received it. If we take our responsibility seriously, we will constantly make the community a more beautiful place for which each for each succeeding generation. This is evolution. We learn the beauty community is our universal mother. We learn our first lessons from her. We learn to fight, love, and struggle there. Whatever lessons we would leave to the community, she will pass to our children, our little brothers, our sisters. If we leave positive lessons, then our people after us will grow and prosper. If we leave negative lessons, then our community will go into decline. If you bleed her blocks, poison her bloodstreams with drugs, saturate her, her with profound ignorance, and murder her children through gang terrorism, then she goes into a regressive state. This we will call de-evolution. You can always tell what state the community is in by the artistic expression of its people. When she is in a life state or evolutionary state, the, the people will create art and music that celebrates life. When she is in a deaf state, the people will celebrate death in their cultural expression. They, they will praise drugs, murder, and materialism over knowledge, people, and culture. The, um, Brother Sykes Pro. Yeah, imagine that. On his phone. Ah, oh well. And the question is, do we owe anything to the community? So who want to jump in there? Wall, you ready? I am part of what you stated though. You dropped out. I dropped I out? Yeah, you dropped out. Uh, I think when you got ready to talk about the system. In fact, the story where you said the system, in fact, destroys. That's a quote. Black. That's a quote from Hugh P. Newton. It says the system is from the uh, revolutionary suicide by Hugh P. Newton. It says the system, in fact, destroys through neglect much more often than by the police revolver. The gun is only the coup de grace, the enforcer, to wipe out the conditions leading to the coup de grace. That was our goal. That was that was what was left for the quote from Hugh. It's a more in that passage, but I'm not going to read it out because it talks about it's talking about the decline of the community, and then it moves into the rise of the revolutionary themselves because of that decline. Did you want me to go into that before you gave your response? Now let me let me let me yeah. kind of respond there just a little bit. With within the Panther Party, uh, the current generations, we have what we call the three Ds, which is define, develop, and defend. The develop part goes into the fact that. Every a panther considers them, themselves to be accountable for the conditions of the people. Unfortunately, one of the things we have to do as a result of the, the detriment of the community is show the people through observation participation on how they should treat their community. Our people suffer from what we call renter's mentality. Renter's mentality goes into the fact that if you don't own your own property, you don't own the land, you don't own your culture, you don't own your way of life, then everything that you do is basically at, at the is is built on someone else. Your expense is built on someone else. Your survival is built on someone else. So then from that standpoint, what is your incentive to take care of something that you don't own? What is your incentive to take care of something that you don't have the power to uh, to uh, manifest? And so that in a uh, I would say in a completely overwhelming aspect is is where the mentality comes from a lot of times to where we don't take ownership i would throw into that because of our lack of political education and our lack of recognizing that politics is everything everything is politics which is what we say when we when what we mean what we say when we mean by that is also self-governance we talk about being self-determined being self-determined is politics because you're talking about a self-governance what do we talk about it from the individual? Again, the family or the community. The point being, we're talking about politics. And so the politics of the black community is in disarray because we don't take ownership of our community. I even would go as far back in terms of the sickness for the trauma that was that was dealt with in slavery to where uh, a child was often forced, a, a male child was often forced to have sex with his sister and his mother, which is where the term uh, motherfucker comes from. 
And as a result of that, we still are suffering from that trauma and we still are dealing with certain levels of sickness because we have been stripped of so much. And to get us to recognize the power that we do have to take things back in our own hands and to accept that. And again, again, you also have to throw in the fact that typically when we do, when we have prospered in our communities, they come in and they do what? Bomb them. They come in and they, and they come up with ways to destroy it to keep us from being able to deal with self-determination. So this is a lot of times the result of that, because as a people, we suffer from all types of levels of oppression that causes us to be uh, our communities to, do, to be impoverished. I even would throw in the fact that a lot of people don't recognize that the job of the CIA, one of the jobs of the CIA is dealing with internal, what they refer to as internal and external uh, threat. Part of that goes into why crack cocaine and heroin was flooded throughout the black community. And it was done as in order to keep the black community in a condition of disarray. What we're talking about is we're talking about being at war and conditions of disarray and dysfunctionality that is interjected within our communities. And so most of the people are living through their pain and living through their victimization and therefore don't see how to come up out of it. And then that sickness that they that that they that they regurgitate over and over in terms of the community, the few that are able to see past that feel like it is it is in so much of a disarray. They just want to escape it. Either the answer to the law supporters question because the brother asked, do we have a responsibility to the community? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I thought them glasses were supposed to help you to see clearly about things like this. Well, I, I can't, it does, they do. <laughs> but you put us um, I, I mean, am I answering this? That's up. That's up. That's up to him. That's up to because it's fucked up a situation as we're in. We're all individuals, you know, at least in our minds. And you know, I kind of figured out that we are real stupid. War stupid. Sight stupid. I'm stupid because for the past 25, 30 years. We've been going about this whole thing wrong. Like all of it, 100%. Completely wrong approach, uh, 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 philosophy, all that shit. I'll tell you what, Fred Hampton said it. He said, basically, the people are revolutionary. Now, we understand the people in the sense, I don't think that he was talking, he was saying it literally because obviously the people are not. We're very reactionary. But as y'all like to say, the people as a concept. So if the people as a concept are revolutionary, that revolutionary concept is revolutionary only to the mind of an individual. So we've been trying to take these individual minded people and convince them that there's part of some, or, uh, trying to take black folk and talk about community, not realizing that you're talking to individuals. And the first step is to get the individual to see that they're not individuals that that's something that we accepted from them. Their perception of the reality is only surface level. So when you look at the world on a surface level, everything looks separate. Sykes over there, wars over there, I'm over here. This is a separation. And that's why they can only perceive things as being individual. But when you look at it from our perspective, our understanding, we know that there's something behind that that we can see the face of the moon, but there's something deeper to that. And when you dig into that deeper, that's when you begin to, to understand and understand and relate and become aware of the, the fact and reality that uh, uh, it's beyond that surface level that we are in reality, a community. We are not individuals. We're expressing individual personalities and thoughts and da 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 da. But below that surface aspect, we are a community. But trying to get that across to a to an individual mind, it takes something so far out in left field that it cannot at all in any way be grasped. This should have been a requirement for all of us. And I'd say war, which is 
especially with his new recruits, and still yelling this fucking black power that is essentially meaningless because it's only a good idea. It exists absolutely nowhere. And uh, we could do a whole show on that shit. But instead of yelling black power, we should maybe be greeting each other and saying something like, uh, I am weak to drive home that idea because we've been told so many times over the years, I'm an individual, 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 individual. I, 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 I. That's all that matters. So to try to counter that, to try to put a different perspective and at least different words on people's mouths and their lips so that they come into at least with a superficial surface level acknowledgement of what it is we're dealing with Maybe you walk in the room and the greeting is not black power. Maybe that's something you graduate to is, is a black power greeting. But as a newbie, as a neophyte, as somebody just coming into it, the idea should be to break those bonds of slavery. And that first bond of slavery is in the mind. And in our minds, we are individuals trying to do the work of, of the community. And that's just not going to fucking work. Only the community can do what the community does. The individual cannot act as the community. It's like I got chickens in the garden and all of that, but I'm not communal at all in any way shape or form because the individual uh, uh we can't do the panther 48 you know i can't do the panther 48 because panther 48 is three cats blah 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 blah. get on here and make a show and put the name on there but the reality of it is that's not the community so it can only the community the work of the community can only be done by the community mind I mean, you know what I'm saying? Is it making sense? And, I don't know. I don't have much. It makes, no, it makes all the sense in the world. But what what you've done is you sent a full circle right back around because it's culture that creates that community mind. Culture yeah. is is what is what draws people together and have people operating as a group and not as an individual. It's culture that does that, and it was culture that was taken from us to make sure that that communal mind that you're talking about would not exist. But that, but that's only a linear aspect of it. Cyclically, culture begets the the mind begets the culture begets the mind. It's a circle. They affect one another and they feed and grow off of it. Culture informs the next uh, mind that's coming up behind it. That mind, in turn, uh, expresses itself into the culture, which shapes the culture, which shapes the next uh, mind that's coming into view. So it's always a circle. It's you can't help but go full circle. That's the whole point. We got to go full circle. Life is constantly full circles, the full 360 degrees, complete. So we have to be able to embrace the duality of that shit, that this culture is a culture of individuality. There's always gonna be a culture there. Like you said, my chickens got a culture. There's one particular chicken that will get up on the top roofs. That's that's the boss bitch. Put it so, you know, young people, I know that's the language among motherfuckers to understand. That's the boss bitch, all right? She's the CEO of, of East Chicken Coop. She will jump the fence and go running around the yard. She'll come back. You know, if I throw a lizard out there, you better move it out the way because she's going to get it. So everything has a culture. Ants have cultures. Bacteria have cultures. Culture is just your way of life. Our way of life is not ours because we keep begetting and adding a little bit of shape, a little bit of flavor, a little wrap there, a little fashion there to what it looks like, but not affecting what it actually is. We keep doing what it actually is, so it reinforces the underlying individuality. So the culture creates individuals, which is self-destructive because the culture, ours, especially for us, because ours is a culture of, 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 of community, with that individuality, we're kind of we're pushing each other apart. Because individual again, individuals can't be cohesive. Only a community is cohesive. And so we have to at some point start convincing ourselves, start realizing that we're not individual. That doesn't take away from your humanity, your reality, your expression, none of that shit. It means that now you are no longer immortal. See, this is a fucking show. It's another damn show I'm trying to do. And this is why I was talking about war. You're backing stuff up in my head and now it's all just coming much together. And that ain't right. Cause this ain't the topic that I wanted to fucking do. This is y'all shit. Now, yeah. but the fact of the matter is, see, and I'm gonna just say this. A man, not only this is an example, a man needs a woman for sex. A woman needs a man for survival. Now on the surface, in the white world, oh, he said, said, man, see, I told you, they just dogs. They want, wah, 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 wah. see, she just want money, survival, wah, wah, wah. that's what we get out of it, a good fight. 
But if we dig beneath that, true to our culture, we see that a man's path towards immortality and his legacy is through a woman, because that's how he projects himself into the future. You know, we can go in, and on the show that I want to do, we, we talk about the mitochondrial DNA and all of that shit. But that's how he projects into the future. So that's her service to his ability to be a part of the community, affect the community now and in the future. For her, it's a maintenance of a reality of right now. You know, you break it down in the most bare bones, simple uh, 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 level possible. If you're out in the woods and you got to survive, I don't know if I've ever met a sister that's going to be able to set up a perimeter, build some type of shelter, go secure food, go secure water, da 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 da, da. Not because she doesn't know the, the, the tips, techniques, and, and tricks, but because physically she's not built for that shit. Dragging logs back for two or three miles back to where you were, stopping to shoot something to eat, stopping to shoot a fucking bear because he's coming at you. That's not what a woman is built for. Just physically, it's not. And that, like I said, the mitochondrial DNA, she projects her life, her impression into that shit. We project ours into the physical, and that's what makes us suited for that. So we stabilize the here and now for her, and in return, she gives us a legacy into the future. And that's the depth of the community. That the individuals can't do that because individuals enter into a relationship are in competition because they both individual wants to express, individual wants control, individual is scared. And so those things bump heads. And so we go into relationships, just simple male female relationships in competition. We can't cooperate because we're competing with one another. But we only compete with one another because we've accepted their concept of death. And, and I was going to, in my show, that I'm going to run that down because I'm real anxious about that shit there. But, and so, except, so, put, yeah. so, take, so put your other glasses on so you can stay on this culture topic. No, no, this is your topic. I want credit for it. I want it under the one with the K on the culture, spelled with a K. Now, no, 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 no. But the, 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 we, we can't accept those things because we only operating in an individual mentality. And that's why I say the first step, the first, if, if, if you decide that you have a, <clears throat> a, a responsibility to, and I don't know what culture he was referring to, you know, I guess that's really what, what, what I would need to start is, do we have a responsibility to the culture? What do you mean by the culture? Whose culture? Who are yeah. you? I mean, and that, and that would bring up that first, that next question, which is, who are you? I identify as far as those things are concerned as an African, so I feel like I have a responsibility to that because that's a, a part of my experience and who I express and what I am. But I don't know what he may mean by the culture, because as we talked about, the culture is a response to the oppression. So it's really not even our culture. Do we have a responsibility to that culture? Fuck no. To destroy it. Yeah. Well, I think you talk. You y'all froze up on me. Y'all know y'all got me. Y'all got me on a wing and a prayer. So I didn't hear the last part. Last thing I heard was when you said that uh, it depends on who is he talking about, whose culture. But and yeah. I think you talk. Yeah, I think you talking about black culture, black people as a whole. And and I I sincerely think he was talking about uh. Because he one one of the things he told me about that he said to me, and the discussion is he talked about how uh, uh, some that I can identify with, or how at one time in the streets on the street level culture, there was a responsibility to the OGs who was already in the streets to teach and raise up the young G's who was freshly coming to the streets. They had an they had an obligation to teach them, guide them, school them. You know, one of the things. One of the greatest insults uh, that you can give a dude to claim he from the streets when he when he going astray or when he not operating according to those codes, you know, you ask him, you know, who who raised you? Who did you come up under? Where did you get your game from? Because a dude is operating this dude is operating on a whole nother level that's outside of that particular culture. And I think, and we always know that the microcosm is nothing more an example of the mac of the, of the uh, macrocosm the microcosm is nothing more than an expression of the macrocosm 
And every time we look at culture, whether we're talking about subculture or as we would like to call it the root culture, we know that those subcultures still have elements of that root culture. And that root culture, that root culture, like I defined in the last cultural conversation that we had, was the thing that cemented the people together. And who have brought the people together, who have created the integrity amongst the people. When you started violating the morals, the morals, the codes, the rules, the principles that were that are that are basically accepted amongst that particular group of people, then you will be outcasted. You'll be ousted from the people. But the older people, the people who have been there, the elders, had the responsibility to teach you what those rules were, to teach you what those codes were, to guide you along the way. And I think that's what the brother is talking about. And at some point, you know, many feel that the elders dropped the ball for some reason. Because the community wouldn't be in the situation that it is in now if the ball wasn't dropped. If culture was doing what culture was for, culture is always passed on from generation to generation. What happened that stopped culture from being passed on? Well, see, that, Even that's, during slavery, we were still trying to pass culture down. See, boy, he trying to get into my shit. He don't know it. And see, this is that this is that that feminine shit. This is this is that that energy and shit. You are walking right along the tightrope of exactly what the class, the, the 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 cultural show that I was wanting to do next. So I'm gonna pull back from that because that ain't fair. Um, that's the that's the question the brothers asked. <laughs> I, I might I might end up pulling you right right back into it. But let me let me kind of elaborate a little bit on that because I want to make sure our people recognize the the weaponization of this and so i would say i refer to that subculture that you talked about as a culture of separation a culture of separation creates an individual it is not the individual the individual is the byproduct but what happens is it's the actual culture of separation and this goes back to the the uh the uh divide and conquer concept as it applies to separating forces, period. And it was taught in such a way that de-evolution is in perpetual mode. And that's what we have to uh, accept when we talk about warfare and we talk about something being weaponized is the game, the end game result of being able to have a powerful weapon is to make that weapon be able to be operational in perpetual mode so that there's very little effort, if at any effort, you need to you need to do to keep it maintained and to keep it going. And that's how they operate. When I say they, I'm talking about CIA, I'm talking about government, it, it, any anybody that's going to make sure that they are able to deal with social engineering as it applies to their citizens and applies to anything that's going to come, come against the way of life. And then I would say that uh, we're talking about it being passed on to each generation and the evolution of dysfunctionality in such a way uh, that it gets more embedded visual with each generation to the point that this separation is psychologically making people try to become both or should we say both yin and yang at the same time as it applies to their approach to everything in life on a physical level to the point that what happens in future creations of nature, the combining of the binary is created what, we, what people refer to as the non-binary. Why? Because through that de-evolution of separation, you now have to operate, you have to tell your mind that you have to play both parts, both roles of the yin and the yang as it applies to male, female, in community relationships, because we have to engage in the fact that when we talk about a community, we talk about the regenerative process, period. I understand, I get that not everybody is going to be a parent, so to speak. But when you talk about a community, you're talking about a gathering of people. You can't gather something that was never created. How do you create more people? Reproduction, period. They, they, you, you, a baby comes from somewhere. And that baby is going to grow up. And in order for that baby to reproduce the next generation, it has to co-mingle with something in order to do so. Period. And so when you put this in a situation, again, going back to slavery, when you talk about a child having to have sex with his mother, 
And when you talk about a welfare system that was snatched out of the concept of what the Black Panther Party was doing when it was feeding they, the, the community and and uh, food, uh, you know, for breakfast, and then the, the government took it over when we was getting our own our people to deal with self-preservation and, and, and not need government support. And the government saw that as us gaining uh, self-determination and gaining power. So they created a codependency back on them. And in order to accept this codependency, now that we done went to war with the Panthers and destroyed the, the, the products of, of self-determination that they had in the community, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. In order for you to be able to get this welfare or to get this handout and to embrace this codependency, you can't have a man in the house. Going back to what Syke was saying in, in Hirshule, and by not having that man in the house, not only are we talking about the, the, the having the man in, it, it, as a physical tangent, we also about the, the spiritual, psychological, and the emotional elements. So these things played on both sides of the fence. And by playing on both sides of the fence, going into survival mode, the people find themselves basically how, feeling like and this to me, this whole feeling, this identity politics, identity politics is I have to be both. And as I and I start hopping, feeling like I have to be both, then I develop an appetite for both. So if I develop an appetite for both, then what I do, what do I start doing? I start liking both. And then if I start liking both, then I start creating an acceptance of both. And then when I create an acceptance of both, now I am deteriorating and destroying the concept of what creates a regenerative process in terms of putting a community and building a community together. And what I'm doing is de devolving the process of the ownership as it applies to the family unit. Because now we are able to cohabitate as individuals and these individuals all have a individual responsibility and then these individuals can form communities of individuals and then that becomes that that perpetual cycle that we're talking about so to me a lot of this all leads back to aspects of destruction between the male and and, and the female relationship to the point of, of the trauma that happens uh, it, within that structure that creates the child toward the survival mode has kicked in and we ignore and don't and don't realize how we were brought to war with one another within our household. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> but, but, see, that's, that's, but, the, but, but the question is is still problematic simply because there's no identification of the culture in that question. What is the culture? If he's talking about black culture, we've already talked about there is no black culture. It's cultural blackface. If you feel responsibility to putting on the face, carrying out the culture, that culture, and perpetuating that culture willingly, then you know that's your individual responsibility. But I don't think that's what we're talking about. I mean, think about it. let's think, let's, let's go into it. Let's go deep into it. Okay, right now we don't have a black culture, just cultural blackface. Something happened that produced that. We, oh, stopped, we, stopped, we stopped expressing our culture and start valuing the culture of somebody else. There's something that created that. At some point, I think what the what the what the viewer was trying was getting at is when did we stop passing our culture down to our people? When did we stop teaching that? And 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 who's responsible for bringing that back if it's not here? And if not having it is going to destroy the people. Because if you understand, if you understand, and let me do this quick, quick rundown. Boom. Uh, uh, I'm going to get, a, I'm gonna get just a tad bit esoteric, then I'm going to come back down to earth. The creative energy, the creative consciousness of, of, of the universe manifested human beings out of his own consciousness. It used the science of evolution to do it. Human beings then, throughout time, learned to live together because it was more, it was more secure and safe. By living in proximity to one another, <laughs> by living in proximity to one another, human beings then automatically, by systematic automatic remote control, developed this thing called culture. They developed this thing. Want to show? Want to show this to brother? Old brother, what? Y'all probably can't see it. 
but nope. they develop Ooh. it's called spirituality before religions spiritually spirituality is unseen science science is seen spirituality by professor kaba hiawatha kami kamine i think that's how you say the name newest book one of the newest books i just got i just dived into is the brother kind of eating at the at the moment but i'm just at the beginning but back to the point but by automatic systematic remote control being that human beings would have proximity to each other they would develop a culture a common language common experiences a common way of life that culture is what creates what freud likes to call the super ego he, he said that the human mind is broke down in, in the three parts the id, ego and the super ego the id is that 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 basic animal instinct aspects of ourselves the ego is our as, as he talked about that personal identification with a with a personal individual personality and the super ego is the identification with the group that culture is what produces that that identification something happened in our history that made us stop passing culture down which is something that we was naturally doing since the time that human beings first started walking this planet something happened to stop that and the brother is saying do we have responsibility to that to bringing that back? That's what the brother is getting at. The first uh, 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 culture exists before community. You know, the first culture that you experience is between that you and the community. And huh? that, that's what I was saying. It's culture that creates the community. That's what I was saying. I said human beings live in proximity to each other. Yeah, the yeah. culture develops out of that proximity. That, yeah. that 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 culture is what makes us start creating that that common those common experiences that as you talked about stop thinking in that in that uh that individual mind and start thinking in that community mind it's culture that does that it's culture that does that it creates that it makes that happen and when you <laughs> remove culture or in the absence of culture or with an ab culture it's what produces that individualistic mentality but that that like you've noted time and time again, because of the differences in our development and creation, the African to the European, the way they came up, even individually, their interaction with the environment being dog eat dog and whatnot, developed between the one, the individual and their experience with the community. Our experience with the community, when we came out of the womb, was much more beneficial so it lent itself to a culture that at some point was in place that nurtured that so again culture and the people exist at the same moment they they create each other constantly over and over again so there's no real starting point you can't really say where you became a person where you know where does your life begin is it the moment of conception or da, 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 that's you know one of the big arguments with abortion and all of that is where exactly does life begin where exactly does culture begin the culture begins before the community and develops and grows from that or anti-community the the individual you know the individual is counter to the community but for me i say It's less to me about responsibility so much as it is develop. We, there's a responsibility to self to understand the culture that you exist in and your contribution in it and be conscious of what's going on rather than being a pawn of it and, and, and moved around and done this way, done that way, be conscious of it and contribute to whichever culture it is you see as being beneficial. Because like you said, it was more advantageous for us to have this, this particular type of culture where we got along, came together, da 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 And so then you have a response, but it's still a responsibility to your own existence. I think we have a responsibility and we can talk about the days we began losing that ability when, they, when we first started fucking with them. And that's another one of those questions. You can put a pin in it at several points in time when we first started dealing with white folks, that's when it started breaking down. Talk about the Hicksos and, and Kemet and, and all of that and our first experiences and hundreds of experiences with these people and how Kemet was broken down in large part because of my interaction with those folks 
or we can start it at when we got to the shores of this country and how we started coming apart and how those things weren't passed down, <clears throat> not completely because we didn't want to, but because daddy was taken away from the plantation, you know, baby was sent away from the plantation. So there was, you know, the, uh, 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 is it any wonder that we have males now who would drop a baby and run off? Well, that, that was what was passed down to us. That's the culture that we were given. Our, <clears throat> our more traditional uh, 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 culture and perspectives and all of those things was, was denied us. And that's been a process of, of us being here. For me, <clears throat> the nail in the coffin, when I say we accepted their concept of death, and I hate you both for this, um, is that um, when we integrated, and I'd never heard it talked about segregation in positive terms, but I heard this older cat when I was making some of that music, talking about at least one silver lining in integration. Because as we would go to work up under white people at their jobs in like the 20s and 30s and whatnot, we may venture out to another part of town for a quick bite to eat or, or whatever we could get away with. We eventually would come back to our own communities where you had everybody was black. You had truck drivers living on the same street with attorneys. So we still, still shared a common identity with one another. It wasn't until we began equating freedom, liberation, and all things holy outwardly with these people. And I don't mean going to church and saying it, I mean wanting to emulate them. And that was integration. And when we stepped away from that last vestige, that last communal recognition of us being with each other, experiencing with each other, the ups and downs, it's like the road trips we used to take, the camaraderie you get from being in a car with somebody for six hours or whatnot, that builds shit. Living on the same block with cats builds shit. That's why you get a whooping for three or four people before you get home when you messed up at school. Because yes, we belong to the community. No matter how much they perverted that, that idea of it takes a community to raise a child, that's a real thing for us. But we broke away from that and accepted their concept of death, uh, 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 accepted their mortality and gave up our immortality of community. That was our understanding. We live forever, there's a saying, that, and, and, and I've heard it from a couple of different, uh, what do you call it, uh, cultures, community on the continent. So I'm not gonna give it to just one, but <clears throat> the idea that you never really die until someone, as long as someone remembers your name. So as long as you're uttered, because it's that word, what, what, what did God use to get to, to breathe life? He gave a word, he spoke, spoke us into existence, he said beat. So as long as they're saying sight, as long as they're saying war, it's still life. And that was our immortality. We live through our community. I touch the next generation. Uh, a wise men plant the seeds of trees that they know they'll never sit under the shade of. And that was a real thing for us. When we gave that up so that we could have Chanel, when we gave that up so that we could have nice TVs, when we gave that up so we could be LeBron making billions while the rest of the masses of the people still get fucked off, but he can make a contribution somewhere and feel like he did some shit, it ain't shit. That was our acceptance of their mortality. And that's why I say we accepted their concept of death. As individuals, you're gonna die, period. Everybody watching this is gonna die when you are immersed in the ideas, the concepts, and the lifestyles that we are community. I'm going to be live for a long time after this body is gone and understand it as a fucking reality and not some voodoo spooky shit, that that's a real thing, then, then uh, 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 that's accepting our immortality rather than their mortality. And that is the between reactionary and revolutionary suicide. Somebody who, com who, who commits revolutionary suicide does so with that concept fully intact. They know that they're gonna live forever. So it's all right, I'm sacrificing this body to move my legacy and the legacy of the people forward. Motherfuckers will remember my name and I'll come up in conversations as somebody who did something for us, for we, because I am we. 
uh, a reactionary suicide, somebody who commits reactionary suicide, which is all of us spends their days, everything we do, what psychics, what, what uh, Biggie say, uh, born to die, YOLO, everybody likes to say, YOLO, you only live once. There's a TV show back when I was a kid came up and their, their theme song would start out. This is it. This is life. The one you get. So go and have a ball. And that's our perception. That's what we bought into. And so with that being the case, we are going to die. And that's just what it is. Our path to immortality is a rejection of their individuality. The rejection that the surface level is what it is. When we knew full well, the surface level was simply to catch your attention, to say, look deeper, go on the other side of the moon that you ain't never, ever seen, but has got to be there. You say God, but now get on the other side and get rid of the words and just, it's that door shit. So yeah, do we have a responsibility? That's your, that's your job. I can't answer that for you. I have one. I can't answer that for, for somebody else. If there's something you find value in, if you find value in your children, you have a responsibility to them because you make it so. If there's no, there's a woman in your life or some shit and you don't value her, no responsibility. You walk away, leave her stranded somewhere. Don't give a shit because you have no responsibility because there's no value there. We don't have a value. We don't see value in our community because we're looking with our two eyes. We can't see beyond that shit. That's the renter's mentality. And, and But see, this, this is what I would say though, E. I say that Again, I want us to the fact that what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a battle and the majority of us are not seeing ourselves as being as a war being declared on the black family, war being declared on the black community. And so we see ourselves as victims and we see oppression, but we don't really see it as a war. And since we don't see it as a war, we continue to become casualties of that war un un aware that we're true casualties so a lot of the stuff that you're talking about to me are just the conditions of being somebody that is a, a, a enemy combatant but think that they're uh being protected by the geneva convention so to speak or being protected by something although that way when, and when it happens to them they feel like they've been done wrong they feel like the system is is not correct that it that it's unjust and the system is actually doing exactly what it's been designed to do. That's the problem. But and that, that, we that, don't see it. but that, that, but no, 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 no. We see it as a war because we use terminology all the time. Me against the world, baby. We see that shit all the time. That's the visual war. That's no, the no, war. No, but that's what I'm saying. But that visual is an indication of, again, the individual. We see it as a war because it's me against whoever, my haters, whoever it is. I'm in competition. I'm in war. But I don't see it as a war of us. Right. I don't see it okay. is what okay. Matthew was talking about. When you put the Novocaine in your jaw, you don't feel it. We don't feel it because I'm not connected to war. That's war problem. Fuck that. He need to get an attorney just like I had to get an attorney. I don't give a fuck. That's his yeah. problem. Yeah, and that, that's kind of what I meant when I was talking about the whole uh, weaponization of, of the subculture which created which created a culture of separation that culture of separation was the weapon that was deployed upon us which makes us see things as individuals and at that point we're, we're operating through our victimization and this is why we may recognize that we're being hurt on a battlefield but we don't realize that the weapon itself that was deployed upon us was separation and that's what I'm saying. We don't identify the actual weapons of war that were used on us. We just know that we getting hurt. So yeah, we, we see something's happening, but we don't see that it what weapon it was. It's just like so many of us don't recognize the, the weapons of religion that's being done on us. We would do our damnest to still hold on and feel like we can can manipulate and change that weapon around and make it a positive. We, well, we, how, how can religion tell people that they'll swear by religion, they'll fight for it? How could religion be utilized as a weapon against the people? Explain uh, that. What you mean by that? So the listeners can understand it. I'm gonna say real quick and then I give it to you. When when, when, when your well, let me say, 
when 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 your uh the religious spirit with that that talk don't look like you then it creates a sense of in, uh, of inferiority period when they don't match up with you when the stories are not your people being told in these stories and when they are your people they're being told from a position of enslavement and again like we talk about the slave bible I and mean, we talk about aspects of it that was used to justify mm -hmm. us placed in position of inferiority so when your religion does not match up to what you are in your lineage especially from a positive obviously a positive perspective then it is being weaponized against you and it's making you in not only from the standpoint of of a racial tone and a a a, a, a racial tone and a land-based tone but also from the standpoint of a psychological tone and making you docile and making you uh uh accept the position that you are in accept the fact that you're going to get beat down and, and and things will be better when in the afterlife so these are the ways of this world so, to speak. so now you're taught to not even fight back through your religion you're taught that this is how it's supposed to be through your religion so they're giving you three different doses of 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 ways that they're hitting you. So I would lay, I would say it like this, they're hitting you through land, sea, and air. They're hitting you all on all levels and you and you still trying to fight uh, a ground fight with with small arms and, and they all over you with in, in the sky, in space, and under the ground, in the sea. They're hitting you from all these angles and all you think you, and, and you think you can free yourself with small arms. And that's what, and that's where I see it is with religion. I can't remember who said this. I'm pretty sure one of y'all gonna remember when I said, but it, and I can't believe I can't remember because it's the idea that I've accepted and what made me start exam examining religion at a deeper level, and it's what also made me uh, become non-religious. But a brother said religion is the deification of culture, and uh, if you understand that, if you start to really recognize that, and 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 understand the deepness of what that statement is saying then there will be no way to practice an alien religion without in the process losing your culture because you will start practicing that alien culture because as you just said, you will start seeing your de your concept of deity become somebody else. Not only does it become somebody else, but it becomes the very person who has enslaved you and who has sought to completely eliminate you, your people, and your culture. That's a very negative thing for a group of people. So everything in this war has been weaponized in the in the elimination of 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 of, uh, of the opposition. Everything has been weaponized from your relationship to your religions to the to the thing that you think is your culture. Everything has been weaponized. And I want to say something clever too. Uh, the uh, uh, you see, individuality is the deification of the ego. There you go. That's all I have to say. <laughs> that might make a little sense. You know, every so often, what well, that, that year, brother, he has the right to make a little sense. But see, that kind of goes into a and I probably need to expound on that when I meant when I talked about the bon the, the binary becoming non-binary. Because mm -hmm. at that point, we're talking about the sub the combining of the empirical and mm -hmm. the uh, rational mind mm -hmm. to work. Again, dealing with the concept of the yin and yang, or two hemispheres, even within within all bodies or all humans, in terms of how our brains are separated, based upon how we're uh, addressing being on the battlefield, based upon how we address our trauma, then what we end up doing is we end up trying to merge both parts of ourselves and e e e e erase the fact that we are two parts. Of a, of a being and we want to erase that and we want to separate it to the point to where I can both in all aspects of everything in every expression so now I'm, I'm, I'm this non-binary I'm able to go in between out of them on all levels to the point to where even from a physical level I am what I feel and I and these kind of things are just to me the repercussions of being at war, traumatized on the battlefield, and not properly equipped with being to address the fact that you are being hit from all sides. And so we're looking at a dysfunctional 
weakness of a of a tore down soldier. I would just say that. Not necessarily. Well, it, it is. It, it becomes a weakness, but it's a tore down uh, version of yourself. Because you ain't you ain't even have you don't even have time to lick your wounds and rejuvenate and and and, and develop or or jump away from one battle before you go into another. There's no point of recharging. There's no point of recentering. Recentering. There's no point of reaching back when we talk about Sikofa and dealing with the elders and and them straightening us out and put back on the right path so that we don't bring this right on to the next generation, the generation behind us. And that's what I mean when I talk about that perpetual sickness. When we talk about a people whose life is based on the mastery of warfare and we talk about a government who is, is, is in power based upon keeping everybody else in some form of disarray. And that's what we have to see, that world powers are designed to stay world powers because they got they making sure that they meddle in everybody else's business, everybody else's politics, everybody else's way of life, everybody else's culture, everybody else's policy, everybody else's everything. They're creating just enough of, of, of dysfunctionality or just enough disarray or, or just enough uh, meddling and all of that to work just you're never able to get over this specific hump in order to be able to deal with termination in its in its purest form based upon how your people would do it if it wasn't dealt with if, if it didn't have to deal with this interference this projected interference that's designed to erode at what you are so that they can be what they are this is how you able to come in and snatch up resources because the people you teach the people to fight against themselves and when you fight against yourself as a collective going back to what he is emphasizing now we're talking about an individual and from that standpoint it's all about me and what's in my front yard if i'm even willing to accept that i got a front yard because if i don't again and i'm going into a renter's mentality it's all about these these fly ass threads i got on or it's all about my car that i'm that that i got on credit that i can't even afford to live in but the bottom line is i'm using these things to make myself feel good, which puts me in a perpetual cycle of consumerism, which just helps them on that level. They found ways to weaponize things against us, destroy the community, and create an individual that is thriving through his hurt off of consumption. Every time they, that that hurt that pain sets in, you go out and buy something. Whether you go out and buy some new clothes, a new car to make yourself feel good get a new credit card to make yourself feel good uh or go to food or should we not even food but more or less some processed mess to make yourself feel good it's all about how i feel 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 and we go into our feelings again going back into the empirical mind and then wanting to use the empirical mind to go to war with the rational mind or the emotional and the logic and i just smack Two together and say, you know what? I'm binary. We call it a day. But I'm that's, done. That, but see, that's 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 the nature of the individual concept. Stop talking and, and muted his mic. What's that? A mic drop or something? I get so. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, the, the 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 weaponization of the individual is a, is is an inevitable and in, uh, eventuality, because the individual has to survive, and if that means I destroy you, so be it. So we are automatically at war to whatever degree. The individual, yes, is, and 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 I'm sure E gonna agree 100 percent with this. First time E probably ain't gonna go to war against me uh, uh, in a in a debate uh, point of view, but. I'm sure. But this is something, you know, I always quote particular books that I was reading and building on when it comes to dealing with and understanding the evolution of humankind. And uh, in a book, I always quote this book because I think it's a pretty good book to read. Uh, it's called Who Are We by Dr. Kirk Herod. It, I, I, uh, uh, it was writ, it was wrote actually by a white Jew, but I think it's a pretty good book to understand how human beings came into being, development, culture, civilization, he built on all those things. It ain't perfect, but it is a, a good book to read to understand the idea. But one of the things he talks about in this book 
is the fact that the individual has not always existed. And that may sound crazy to people to hear like, how, how is that possible? I know I'm an individual. How you, what you mean the individual is not out? Some things are actually concepts that we have accepted. And once we accepted those concepts, those things became real. They became part of our reality, but they have not always been a part of our reality. At one time on the, on the planet earth, there was no such thing as No such thing as an individual. That's what he's going to say. And that goes into the perception. That's what we talk as a pound to the perception. Did you believe me? Oh, actually, I did. I stopped him and I'm like, damn, maybe it's my end. And nah, I, I, I was playing. Well, let's see if he come back. Well. But yeah, what he what he getting at is it goes into our perception. And our perception, when someone else creates our reality, then by them creating that reality for us, then our perception of what we are can get reshaped and does get reshaped. And therefore, there is this thing called an individual. And then that happens basically uh, is when, when history gets rewritten. When history gets rewritten, then I'm living through someone else's someone else's definition. And as long as I'm operating through someone else's, else's definition, there's no way I can be empowered because I am not me. I am I am a shell or a fraction or whatever they made me out to be. And that's what we're talking about. And that's, again, just weapon weaponization. That's social engineering. And it's basically social engineering one-on-one. That's how you control the masses of a people. And in controlling the masses of people, you want to subdivide people up and you want to make them fight amongst themselves and create separations amongst themselves in any in any way possible and when you get down to the point of we're talking about a person then when we get down to that point they want to combine the concept and just make it everything and and not identify with anything or or have this concept of i can identify with whatever i feel like i am and that that's that illusion of certain aspects of freedom that can that basically say that nature is not in control but me i'm in control so that's even when we're so arrogant that nature is not able to tell me what i am because this is what i feel like being today it's like you still, dropped that. yeah i know i dropped that it's still I dropped the silver lining to it is that once you let that genie out the bottle, you can't stop it. So it's not just African people who are in disarray. Their shit's coming apart for exactly the same reason. All these white folk are at odds over every possible difference that they can find because of the, 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 the seeking of control and the individualization, divide and conquer and all of that. As a tool, you have to keep refining and expanding it because your power starts to slip away. Okay, you got to divide them up a little bit more so you can grab back a little bit of that power. When it slips away a little bit, divide them a little bit more so you can grab that power again. So eventually, and it's uh, 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 it's just a self-perpetuating, self-destructive, which is their nature, is to, to fucking self-destruct. So whether, and that's why I've said for, for a minute, we're not going to be the ones that spearhead this shit. This shit is going to happen, period. It's going to happen. Shit comes apart. It moves just like a bomb. It explodes and gets so thin before it collapses in on itself. And there's nothing that anybody can do about that. The dice have been cast. So identifying who we actually are, and I mean, and that's that's the that's the responsibility part of it. You know, <laughs> you're going to be responsible. Be responsible to one of the two, but make a conscious choice to do it. Go running into the burning house, or take your ass home one of the two and that's why i say integration was that moment for us when we gave up that last identifying of ourselves with the whole that was our individualization they chopped us up we no longer identified with the community we identified as they do with the self-destructive nature of the individual and so now at this point we're along for the ride for me, I gather the information so that I can keep it, pass it on to whomever, now, tomorrow, whatever, and live that life 
as as much as absolutely humanly possible. Well, I got a question I want to ask. Since we didn't, uh, since we didn't exhaust that argument and that idea, well, I never did get to finish make my point because I dropped out. So let me make this point: when I was talking about the individual, the Europeans created the concept of the individual. When you look at many uh, uh, indigenous peoples' language, and especially African people, there was a time when our languages didn't even have a word for the I. There was no words for identifying the individual. Matter of fact, the, uh, you can even go into Asian culture where the ideal of the value and the worth of the of the quote unquote person was based on what kind of value the person brought to the whole, to the group. That's why the concept of honor was so big. That's why the concept of honoring or dishonoring my lineage, my family, my bloodline was so huge because your worth and your value was defined by the type of value you brought to the group. So that concept of the individual came out of European culture. And like uh, E said before, with us playing cultural, uh, uh, playing cultural blackface, and with European people being mas the master, quote unquote, masters of black people in America for so long, when black people basically came out of so called came out of ch uh, chattel slavery, we wanted to be like our masters. So we started copying and acting out the majority of the things that our masters were doing. And, and, and that started to de the, de the decline of true and real black culture. So, but where does the responsibility start at for rebuilding culture, or, or, or is it is it impossible now? Is it going too far? Well, that's what I was saying. The, the, the responsibility uh, begins when you decide. I can't say what your responsibilities are because responsibility is something you place on yourself. You can't tell me I'm responsible for this because I'm a, it, it worked. They try to tell me, you know. You're going to be a, a, or they wanted me to be a, a lead or a supervisor or whatever. And I refuse that responsibility. I'm not going to put that responsibility on me. They can't put it on me and make me take it. I can always quit. So responsibility is something you take on for yourself. So you have to decide. So-called individual matter with individuals has to decide whether this individual lifestyle is the culture that I want to pursue or propagate, or if I want to do this over here. And, and right now, from what I see, the people are nowhere near ready to take on that level of responsibility. Oh, absolutely not. Well, That's why I said well, we you, start at the basics and say, I am we. We, 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 we. Boy, you've been in that beret fighting for the liberation of the people for the last 83 years. Ain't this shit. <laughs> you, 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 I'm, you ain't I'm, nobody yet, war. So what I'm, saving, I'm, I'm saving those that I can. There is a small percentage of us people that are fighting and, and, and they are able to see that. The point being, we have to figure out a way to to increase our numbers, and maybe when enough of us hurt, there hard you go. enough, hard pipe, enough then, pipe dream. Then, then it can then it then it'll it'll shift back around. <laughs> is that a pipe dream or is that the dream of revolutionary? Because it's then, revolutionary then, suicide. You and Pete Newton said he said that 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 that's the type of that's the type of foolishness. He said the, he said the revolutionary suicide. Matter of fact. The way he closed the book, he said that the revolutionary has to be a foolish man because he said he's like a he's like a foolish old man who's trying to move a mountain with a spoon. And he's standing up with the spoon and he's moving the mountain with the spoon just a little dirty at, at the time. And so a man walked by and looked at him and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to move the mountain. And he say, you, you this man must be a fool. You cannot move a mountain with a spoon. But, but he kept can't. moving. He kept digging and digging. And then his children and his bloodline came out and they started digging and digging because of his inspiration. And then he said the people came out and then they started digging and digging because they was constantly inspired by those who was who were constantly digging. He said, finally, uh, uh, the, the uh, mountain was moved from one place to another. He said the, uh, the angels in the story that came out of heavens and moved the mountain represents the people. The revolutionary can never move the mountain. The revolutionary inspires the people to move the mountain. The people right. are the only people are the only thing that can actually move the mountain of oppression. And right. that's but, what revolutionary suicide is. Yeah, but the point being is that the people need to see uh, enough enough examples. And is especially when they don't see examples, as long as you got folks being able to say, Oh, I didn't even know the Panther Party was around. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know about option. Oh, I didn't know about this. It's, it, it, they, they're not coming into contact enough with us 
to even create that. So what's happening in this social media age where you have full access to all homes in the country? Why don't would, they know black exists? I would, tell you, I would, I would tell you same way. I, the same way our numbers are low. It has to do with those analytics and, and the fact that we don't have the sugar content or the crack content or the dope content that in, entices people to stay hooked. No, to stay a certain thing. No, 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 not in my house. The Go reality ahead. of it is, with or without the analytics, if you want it, you're going to go get it. That might have been good for the 60s. Motherfuckers were like, could say, well, I don't know where to get the information. But in the 60s and the 50s, we were asking the question, where, where did our people come from? But we don't ask those questions anymore. So what happens on the internet is we search for the same stupid shit on YouTube or wherever, and we find the same stupid shit. So it feeds itself. And until something comes in to interject that and change that trajectory in that person's mind to want, because the information is out there. It's out there. Like, like you said, all of this, the internet is, is pretty big. So there's a lot of information out there. If you want it, you will go and find it. If you're hungry for it, I forget who it said, but we've lost, I think it was, we've lost a hunger to know who we are. And right. again, it comes from the individual because I know who I am, nigga, what you talking about? I know nothing about African, wah, 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 all that bullshit. We think we already know it because we've been convinced as an individual, the only history that's ever existed is the history that started the day I was born. And then only kind of. If I don't remember it, really it's not history. It doesn't really matter. And then we have short-term memories that don't last but a week or two. So we remember even less. So we, there, there's no drive to get that information. And that's why I say <clears throat> it's going to happen. It's coming apart. Yep. And in my head, the best bet is to develop a cadre, a circle, a cipher that is practicing those things because that is going to be a culture, a conscious culture. As this other shit dies down, this other thing comes through to begin to grow through the concrete, the roads that grow through, grew through the concrete to express and to build a different culture, to give birth to a different people who give birth to a different culture, da 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 da, and so on and so forth. But the masses of the people, as they are right now, you know this. Quit stop saying that shit, war. You know full well when shit hits the fan, and you got a dumb bunch of dumb motherfucking individuals who have no concept beyond me. Everybody gonna be rushing to Walmart trying to get the last toilet paper and end up shooting each other over a TV. That's what the fuck we're gonna do. That, that's just what it is, black, white, and otherwise. Because we so, think individual mindset. And so you, 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 y'all you, can do what you want all day long over there, that's fine. But I'm an individual, I don't need to do all, I have to go that route, wah, 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 wah. But in the meantime, as the individual dies, if this one little community of five Africans doing what African people do, survive and make it through, and African culture has survived. And when African culture survives, African people survive because one can't live without the other. So practicing that culture, culture is, is practicing, practicing the people. people. Perpetuating, perpetuating the culture is perpetuating the people. They're one and the same. You can't separate the two. So living- but The way I see that is it goes, it still goes into the fact that people will be forced to deal with self-preservation and that right. self-preservation force collective operation in order to survive how do you make that jump from an individual who that only is, understands the first rule which is 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 self uh preservation who their whole you know 30 years or whatever their whole life i'm an individual i gotta get mine you gotta get yours i mean i with you i'm gonna I'm tell you i'm gonna tell you why Man, because they nature dictates say, that. oh now we're a collective how does nature, that work? Nature dictates that everything in nature operates that way once it, it once they're forced to anyway. Nature is going to create that scenario. People band together, animals band together, things band together when there is no option anymore to be able to be an individual and survive. I don't like that announcer, but I'm saying that if it comes to that, if that is going to push the narrative and create that situation. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be a big population of those. There's still going to be a small percentage that survive into that into that sector 
Then why that, not sit back and wait for the shit to happen? Talking about. What's that? Why, why not sit back and just wait for it to happen? If that's the inevitability, which is essentially what you're saying, when shit hits the fan and it gets bad enough, we'll clean together and do the communal thing. We don't need to do any work in the community. We just wait oh, for that's shit not to true. Because we, we, need, we need to foster the mentality that of what it takes when no, we that, don't. that happens. Yes, you do. No, because you just said it's going to happen regardless. That's what you said. And I'm doing my role regardless. That's just it. Those that are accountable are accountable regardless because they recognize it. Well, what did he do? Shit you up, E? No, he ain't shut nothing up. He ain't answering. No, we we both we we it's, both it's, it's we going both, out and 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 moving a mountain with a spoon at a time is what you're compelled to do. Okay, but realize. That while you're moving that mountain a spoon at a time, somebody's replacing that mountain on the other side. So you think you're moving it, but all I'm doing is building up the mountain, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So the exercise and futility is great for self-sacrifice for being the goat, mm. but it doesn't do anything to affect the inevitability. If it's inevitable, you it's whatever. So why not? My response would be why not uh, 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 immerse yourself in the blackface culture, reap the benefits knowing, hey, it's all gonna come back to Africa anyway. It's all good, baby. What well, I need to do that for? When well, shit I don't gets, think, I don't I'm think help, it would help the shit get bad enough because I'm gonna spend a bunch of money at Walmart, which in turn is gonna feed the machine, which in turn is gonna eat itself. So I'm actually a revolutionary by going and buying some Chanel or some, some Red Tops. I, that's my contribution. No. Oh. Every, every, every there are there's there's those that are in the know that do their part and there's those that are trapped in the matrix that don't get it and do other people's op, operate off they operate off their should i say their trauma operate off their dysfunctionality and don't know how to do anything other, other than be chaotic but One, that's, that's their part you can't be a revolutionary if nobody's oppressed so that's their part they're helping you out well, we come back. We come back to the to the thing that we started off reading. I'm gonna read this other part. It, it ain't as long as the first part. But remember when we started the show, and I read that passage. The passage talks about the community as our natural mother. You know, the community is the place that we learn our first lessons from. We learn how to fight, how to make love. We learn how to build in the community when the community is well. And the yeah. ideal of of human society is that the people. Well, the culture will naturally be passed on from generation to generation until something comes along and interrupts that. It interrupts that natural evolution that a group of people will go through if they're allowed to keep building and, 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 and uh, elevating themselves. That interruption becomes what we call de-evolution. That interruption creates a retardation in the community. It creates an arrested development and the, and the community starts to decline and going to de-evolution. At some point during that de-evolution, a small percentage of people start to recognize that something is not right. These small group of people is where the revolutionary comes from. So I'm gonna read this, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna read this, this second part of this, uh, of this passage. I think my page turned over, hold on. This is the part I'm gonna edit out right here that I have to look for it. This is gonna be edited out. What the hell is the uh damn the page turned on me? Hold on, y'all give me a moment. You, you 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 need to compare your ass to go to the Philippines and live in the goddamn jungle. That's what the hell you compare your ass. War? Yeah, yeah. War? It's time to retire, you old motherfucker. <laughs> and, and when I <laughs> War work, can't retire. I'm a war identify war finds his self-identity through this work. He can't, he's he can't, he don't realize it, but he can't walk away from this yet. All right, yeah. now listen, now here's this next part. I'm gonna start off with a quote from, from I'm gonna start off with a quote from Masada Shakur. It says, "Revolutionaries do not drop from the moon. We are created by our conditions, shaped by our, by our oppression. We are being manufactured in the droves in the ghetto streets." Now that's from uh, the autobiography of Masada. Now the, the rest of this passage goes on to say, "This is the condition that creates the revolutionary." I'm talking about the de-evolution of the community. It's the condition that creates the revolutionary. Once the community has declined to such a horrible state, 
conscious individuals recognize the need for change. They understand that to stop the evolution, they must restart evolution, which is revolution. The revolutionary begins to nurse the community back to health by doing the things that all productive people do. Teaching the people, raising the children, rebuilding positive culture, training the youth in self-defense, feeding the people, and teaching the people how to feed themselves, which is true economics. As you can see, the revolutionary's goal is to build and to create. Once you attempt to create something new, that which already exists will resist your efforts. That thing could be a system or philosophy or just an outdated way of doing things. Once it resists, a struggle begins and something must inevitably be destroyed. So that's the revolution that the people find themselves in today. Or let me say that the revolutionaries find themselves in because the revolutionaries are, are the ones fighting this battle, trying to raise the conscience of the people so that the people can see what's going on so that they can move them out. And, and that just goes into what we call our skill levels of a panther. Because oh. skill, level, skill level number five, we talk about the whole concept of rebuilding. So we put the format out there. We work on gathering up the soldiers, but we're not going to, at least most of us, I'm not going to say all of us, but the majority of, uh, for instance, I have my role. My role is to stay out in the field, is to harvest and, and gather those people. I'm not saying every, every panther should do that. And I'm not saying that's the role of every panther. Some panthers do exactly what he is talking about and clean in, in, in groups and, and be prepared for one, what we call one shit hit the fans. There are some that do that. But the point being, my position is to go find the people that are that are ready, willing, and capable to operate on a higher level so that they can reach more people as well and spark that concept that we call appetite to change, that appetite to change. And you just have to have enough of that in, in a society. That's all I can say on that. Now I kind of, I kind of, not always believe like E, because I don't believe in, and I, I don't want to put words in E mouth, so you have every right to correct me. I don't believe that we got to find like-minded people and then go into a commune together and then operate on this small uh, level with one another, because I don't think we should be localized in, in that extent, because we'll be too easy to eliminate. But I do believe that we could need to create a network with like-minded individuals and then start, start the true process of, of community economics. You know, he, now he's not gonna like this, but the fact is this capitalist system is the economic bloodstream of this society. And, and, and that system stands. And, and the people are those conscious individuals who are able to come together with other like-minded individuals to create this network of consciousness because the masses of the people are not gonna be awake. That's just not going to happen. It has never happened throughout human history. Nowhere we like to fantasize and have these visions and ideas of this glo of, of glory lands where people were walking on gold and everybody were conscious and flowing through the earth. But it, it, people, the mass of the people have never been conscious. The best that you've ever had was enough conscious individuals in leadership position in the community that, that the people actually trusted that was able to be guided by the conscious people. That were they that were they able to be given told what needs to be done. The people trusted those people so much that they did it whether they understood it or not. And that was the best that you've ever had amongst humanity. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna wake up all the people. But I do believe that benefits can be gained from from those conscious minded, revolutionary minded brothers and sisters who are at that level creating a mastermind alliance, for lack of a better word. A, a, a war council, for lack of a better word, a group of people that they can depend on, that they can move and operate with. And then we start providing for ourselves as best we can the basics that human beings need in order to live. We start providing for ourselves. We start creating the things that we need. You know, ideally, uh, 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 and, and now, now I'm idealizing now, but ideally, one of the things that he loved is growing his own food having his own, being, being in control of what it is uh, of having the ability to eat, which is one of the most basic things that human beings have to do. Matter of fact, that ability is the beginning of the civilization. But with that ability, you start producing your own grocery stores, or at least that should be the next step. And then start feeding your own people from your own grocery stores, which keeps your money going amongst your own people. I think it was Dr. Umar that I heard say, 
that uh that the people need the base need basic institutions, educational system, uh, a hospital, uh, a bank, uh, uh, and a grocery store. Those four basic things that people need. Those the people the people can never truly have a community if they don't have those basic institutions. You know, and 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 that's where that network should start focusing on building and to add a fifth one that I understand is very important. And this is one of the things, and I'm not talking about doing anything criminal, but you can look at these examples. You know, uh, uh, if you look at the Italian mafia, one of the reasons why they held respect in their neighborhood, because the fact is they weren't trying to convince people with words. If you didn't operate on how they operated, or you just respected what they were building, there was, a, there was always the underlying element of violence there. Even if you look at the Nation of Islam, we ain't even got to use a criminal. Let's, let's use the Nation of Islam. Yes, uh, Elijah Muhammad was, was respected. Farrakhan is respected. But you know, if you get too far out of line with Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, or anybody else, that that fruit is willing to step to you and do some damage. That fruit of Islam is able and capable of stepping to you and doing some damage. So you need that military aspect. So those are five institutions that you need to actually start truly building community. And I believe that that's what the Black Panther Party, one of the major things that the Black Panther Party was built for, because originally the name was the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. That 